Hi, everybody, and welcome into today's IPTA ClemsonTigers.com basketball report. It is a Friday. Hope you got your orange on. Brad Brunell today met with the media to discuss a little bit about the upcoming game with South Carolina and also about the transfers of Noel Johnson and Dante Hill out of the Clemson basketball program and where his team stands right now coming off the loss to the Michigan Wolverines in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Here are some of the thoughts from Brad Brunell. Really impressed with their team, the way I, in the games I've seen so far, uh, extremely athletic. Uh, love their point guard, Bruce Ellington. I think he's terrific um, for a freshman. Plays the game with great poise. Um, very good three-point shooter. and you know Plays the game at, at the speeds that you need to to be very successful. He can go very fast, but he also knows how to slow things down. And, Get them into the things they like to do. Lakeem Jackson, a really good athletic wing that drives the ball to the basket and finishes. Um, Galloway and Richardson, good three-point <coughs> shooters. And then uh, Malik Cook is a nice athletic uh, foreman that can stretch you and drive you and goes to the offensive boards. And Muldrow is that big post player that you need that, um, you know, mans the middle, can step out and make a shot. Um, and they're, they're playing well. They're playing a lot of confidence. I think their team is a lot better than people thought they were going to be coming into the season. And uh, certainly when you have a point guard as good as Bruce Ellington, and I think he's outstanding, um, you know, I think they're going to have some good days over there. Well, I mean, everybody's going to play. There's not, you know, there's not enough guys not to. Um, the, you know, the ironic thing is, unfortunately, in some ways, in terms of the way it, it's worked out, is we've lost two perimeter players, so now we only have – we really only have four true perimeter players in the program. You know, Brian's really more of an undersized four, but he's going to have to play some at the three. And, uh, you know, some of the way we play, we don't get as concerned with ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives as a lot of people pigeonhole people into, into spots. But uh, Brian will certainly get more time, I think, because of that at a, at a, at a three spot or at a wing, if you will, small forward. Um, you know, and I, I think Bobo's going to Bobo's gonna play more than he's been playing in the last couple of these games. The, the Michigan game, because of the way they run their offense and nobody ever being under the basket, was really hard to play Bobo. He just, for him to, you're basically asking him to guard out on the floor the whole time. Um, and South Carolina State was a little bit similar that way. And so he hasn't played as much, but believe me, I still think Bobo is, is improving. I think he's practicing well. And I think he's going to help us some in the ACC when he plays against bigger body people that are like size and it's easier for him to, to uh, match up defensively. Had a short but very spirited practice, and I thought it was good. And, uh, you know, I thought our guys' focus was pretty good. I think we saw areas where we made mistakes. Our transition defense was really – it was uh, – it was poor in the Michigan game, and it really cost us the lead. When I went back and watched the film, I said it in one of the timeouts to the team that our transition defense is really causing us problems. And when I went and watched the film afterwards, it was even more evident that our transition defense was the major culprit. And some of that's because we didn't make shots on offense and we were always on transition defense. Um, so we tried to address that yesterday a lot in practice. Um, you know. And then we've, we've kind of had a fundamental day yesterday where we just went back to grinding it out and getting better at the basics. And um, we'll begin to start game planning more for South Carolina today and tomorrow. You know, you certainly want to play well and, and, uh, and those kinds of things. I know that uh, I've had a lot of people talk to me that, you know, uh, in the last couple of weeks leading up to the game that, you know, they really want us to win. Clemson fans really want us to win. And, uh, we understand that, and we're going to go down there and play really hard and see what happens. Don't forget that the South Carolina game now has been moved on the schedule. It is a 4 o'clock tip-off instead of a 1 o'clock tip-off on Sunday afternoon in case you're going to be there in the Columbia area or if you're wanting to listen to it on network lines or watch it on television. Also, let me remind you that uh, there are $10 tickets available to Clemson men's basketball for all of the remaining non-conference games and also for the ACC-NC State game. You can purchase those through the Clemson ticket office. And do want to remind you about the Tiger Golf Gathering coming up December 
December 9th and 10th to uh, help support uh, the Clemson Golf Program. Go to TigerGolfGathering.com to find out more information about that. Thanks for being with us today here on ClemsonTigers.com.